So definitely that Roman architecture style like you see, you know, here in Washington, D.C. in the United States. Uh, definitely following that, that type of style and influence. Um, so definitely we're in the U.S. I would be surprised if we weren't considering our, you know, these, these people had a teeny bit to do with the United States. You know, not a lot. They don't have anything important to do, but just a little bit. Also, it looks like uh, the mesh here is stretched. Um, if you notice here, it, like, for example, when you take a look at games and you want to see how they reuse meshes and, and uh, how many times they use them over again, you can definitely see by these here. So this one's kind of like... This is probably the normal size it was when the person in the uh, 3D program did it, but when you go here, it's just stretched out. Like it doesn't, it's not natural. Everything's oval shaped and being, uh, you know, more circle shaped. Um, just one of those neat little observations, and it's really common to do this in the Unreal Engine because working with static meshes is just really nice. Okay, I'll stop boring you with this and continue moving on. A lot of the light rays too, so. Our lungs lost the Delaware. Oh, 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 oh. See it? See it? Watch over me and lend me Floating strength. trees. Shield my ha! From fear and doubt, so that I may hold fast see, if you pay attention for these little things, you can see them. So it's like they just kind of like right-clicked, added static mesh, and then forgot about it. Uh, it. You see this a lot in games. If you really try and take the time and pay attention, you'll find like... Uh, floating objects all the time, especially when it comes to shrubbery and foliage and, and things like that. Also, I like that they spent the time to make the saw blades of the grass actually like pop up from the ground. Um, it's not just a completely flat texture. And also just a really unique, so unique uses of a texture here. Like, you know, usually grass textures don't look that way. So a lot of white, green, um, and red. So they definitely like the warmer hues to stick out in terms of the composition. And the scroll. Sound design is very, very good too. Very nice. Just it feels natural. It feels like you're actually somewhere. You know, the environment doesn't feel dead. Uh, because in game design, still creating a world that seems... Whoa. Hey, cool little hummingbird. That's a nice touch. Hey there, little guy. I mean, one thing that the worlds tend to be can be really stagnant you know things aren't moving things are just there uh and it's a big thing with a lot of indie game developers too that they still got to get over is a lot of times it's just boring but things are moving water flowing hummingbirds it's slight mist upon the pool which means it might be slightly cold up here i'm not sure but yeah so it must be hinting towards the girl from the uh, beginning of the story also another floating mesh See it? It's not perfectly with the wall. Why you know pay attention to detail? Oh wow. So just the way they have this is automatically composed like a shot of, you know, a, a film. Just everything's, again, like I said earlier, the, the, the world just seems to be so dynamic and moving. Whoa. And there's that airship, or a reference to what we saw before. And you can see the uh, same guy we saw in the religious thing too, so he seems to be a big part in before he's the villain of the story. So mass transit seems to be by these railing systems. I saw I saw a little bit in the game that some of the mechanic means you can like come up in and like hook to it. Good animation. Um, a bit exaggerated, but right now in the current state of animation and the way games work, you kind of have to... You just kind of have to. Um, I, I don't see a way of not doing it. Um, just just because of just the limitation of things like polygons and not having enough bone structures around the lips and mouth uh, tends to be a big issue. Um, a, a good example of this would be, at the current time of this video, I think it was ah, a new game engine that was revealed. I can't remember what it was, but they kind of showed the... Uh, face of uh, a man and had him talk and the lips weren't right they just kind of seem to be i don't know like they just don't articulate as much as you see in real humans or even in just 3d animation so i'm just taking things in with the sound like i'm gonna stop talking and just listen for a moment
that the soundscape is just like it's its own music you can hear bells ringing in the distance which means which further probably is trying to say hey this is a very religious wherever we are is extremely extremely religious Good to see hence why it's america i'll take your hot dog sir god it's just crazy how warm the palette goes i and i, I have a soft spot for like warm colors like this um if you ever saw our into the rabbit's hold series um certain scenes if there was a warm color palette i would try and exaggerate the hell out of that so very nice in the distance and again this is conceptual grandness right here when it comes to big expansive and just awe-inspiring th this this is it so he's definitely held in really really high regard like extremely high regard um he he has to be the villain like there's no way he's not going to be the villain um, and so it seems like there's going to be some sort of festival coming that they're hinting at, uh, so I'll have to see where that goes. Please mind the gap. So that's pretty cool. It, it seems like the city itself can arrange itself, just be arranged in different configurations depending on what they need. Um, if that's the case, that's really unique for a, a design for any type of game. I don't think I've really seen anything like this. There's no sense in reasoning with those savages. Comstock will handle them. The Vox. I'm assuming the Vox probably is going to have a lot to do with me if they're opposing Comstock. And I also do appreciate the character design and the clothing. Uh, definitely falls within the era, just the whole suit design. And I appreciate they're willing to use different types of faces, you know, with the bigger nose with this character. Uh, and not falling into the same... Like a lot of games you'll see where they design a character and all the faces are pretty similar. For the women it seems like that. But they have that old look. Old timey feel I guess. A lot of brown and... Steampunky. So let's see what this is. Daily docking schedule. Okay so it seems like I was right. The daily docking schedule appears to be the way the city configures itself. Wow. I'm just so amazed by looking at this. So, discussing it again from f the False Shepherd Tower Protects the Lamb. So, just really trying to hammer home. Uh, and I'm just going to keep comparing it to Half Life 2 because they're, they're just very, very similar games. And they're the two ones that I'm talking about at the moment. Um, you remember before, in games like Half Life 2, where they had the, the main villain of the game, which was Breen. I keep forgetting his name, but yeah, uh, Breen, there was always images of, of him wherever you were. So, same with this. Like, he's everywhere, he's important. Uh, maybe that he... Maybe even the possibility that, so far, what I can tell from the game is... is controlling. You know, maybe always watching you. I, I don't know yet. I'll have to see how that goes. Nice touch of having the kids, like, playing in the water. So again, just a wonderful, wonderful color palette. I like how the buildings are moving up and down. That's pretty cool. So it seems like they're trying to... Like, for people that don't know the style of architecture, Greco-Roman. Or to kind of, like, point out where their influences were with it, too. The shadows are just really nice, too. Really, really... Like, it's, it's just hard to believe where gaming's even at at the moment. Holy crap. So it looks like this is pretty similar to where we were at in this title screen. And, like, this, this is what's so great about today's technology as compared to Half-Life. You could have a lot going on screen, but the technology still wasn't there. And if you wanted to have a lot of things going on, you would have to sacrifice polygon count, which still isn't a good thing to do because then you fall behind in, in visuals um, which you know sometimes is okay but i think in single player story games um, especially if they're going to be by big companies and big titles you you need that columbia's i 